Okay. Welcome to the third webinar in this series on domain names. And today we're going to talk about secret strategies, savings, uh, both saving, you're going to learn how to save some money and save some time and more. And I know how much domain name pain you can suffer with. Uh, I do this every day for a living. And I want to point something out. If you look at my hair, I have long, beautiful hair. And there's a reason I have so much hair. And it's because I don't pull it out trying to come up with domain names. I know all the secrets and I can't wait to share them with you today. So I am, this is me, Alexandra with uh, curly hair. Uh, so I want to tell you who I am. I am, as Grace said, I am the founder of the naming firm Eat My Words and the author of the brand name Bible. Hello, my name is awesome. The reason that I am qualified to talk to you today is because I have been naming things for 15 years, lots and lots of startups, countless startups, lots of big, big brands. I work with companies like, you know, Amazon, Twitter, Microsoft, Disney, Google, Coca-Cola. So big, big brands. So some need domain names, some don't, but for the most part, everybody that comes to us is struggling with domain name pain, and I have a lot of experience that can help you out. So here's what we're going to talk about today, and I encourage you to ask questions. We'll have plenty of time at the end to talk about them. So first, we're going to go over what I call smackdowns, and that's where I'm going to gently smack you around a little bit and talk to you about these are things that you need to believe, and I'm going to change your thinking on some things, and you are going to be so relieved when you learn what I know. Uh, also, I'm gonna share the big secret with you, and we'll learn more about that in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna share all of my Surefire strategies, and these are how you can secure an available domain name with modifiers and creative workarounds. Finally, sorry, not finally, uh, we're going to talk about Name Studio. This is absolutely my favorite domain name generation tool. It's the only one I use. I can't wait to show you how to use it. And then we'll have the ask me anything Q&A. And I do, I do encourage you to ask me anything. No, no question is, is off limits today. Alrighty, so first let's go over those smackdowns. So this is where I'm going to dispel some common misperceptions. And these are things that you might have believed for a long time. But, but like I said, you are, you are going to change your way of thinking. These are all things I know for sure because I do this every day. And I'm going to tell you, it might be painful to undo your thinking, but it will make your life easier. I promise. So SmackDown number one, don't start with your domain name. When you're naming a brand, a startup, a product, first nail your brand name. Why? Because that's the most important thing. That's what people will see first. It's what they'll use all the time. Your name will get used more than any other investment you make in your business. So you want it to be great. So don't start by immediately going to a domain registrar and like killing all these names because you're like, oh, it's not available. Don't worry about that. I got to tell you, here at Eat My Words, we were doing a project the other day for Colgate and we, we were pretty far down the path. We were in our second presentation. And that's when someone said something about domain names. And I was like, oh, I forgot. We got to look at domain names. So it's really, it's honestly not as important as you think it is to first get your domain. There's plenty of opportunities to do that later. Get your name first. And you, it needs to be a great name. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. And clear trademarking. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Next, SmackDown number two, no one but you cares if you have an exact match domain name. I'm going to show you some examples, and even though you think it's really important, you're going to realize, yeah, you know what? Maybe it's not that important. It's better just to have a great name and a good domain name. Okay, next, uh, your name needs to pass the Eat My Words Smile and Scratch test. If you missed webinar one and webinar two, I'm going to go over what this is. Smile, so I have a philosophy that a name should make you smile instead of scratch your head. And 
because we see so many head scratchers, especially with startup names, right? They are, they're just difficult for people. No one likes a difficult name. So SMILE is an acronym for the five qualities that make a name great. And SCRATCH is an acronym for when to scratch it off your list because it makes people scratch their head. So I'm going to quickly go through these for you in case you missed the first two webinars. And I encourage you, uh, these all five, all five of these webinars will be packaged neatly in a nice little uh, a series for you. And I encourage you to go back and see all of them that you missed. Okay, SMILE. The S stands for suggestive. You want your name and domain name to suggest something about what your brand is or does. Don't make people guess. Memorable. What makes a name memorable? It's, it's based on something familiar, right? So it's not random, random letters or unfamiliar words. It's something that people can already connect the dots to that they have an association with. Imagery. It really helps if your name has imagery because it helps people remember it when they're trying to recall it later from their brain's dusty filing cabinet. I'll give you an example of a great name with imagery. Rent the Runway. Now that's a unicorn. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And when you hear Rent the Runway, you can picture a lot of things in your head. So that's what I mean by a name with imagery. And by the way, Rent the Runway, it's a long name. And it's better to have a name that's long and memorable than to have a name that's short and isn't memorable, not based in the familiar, doesn't have any imagery. Legs means that your name lends itself to a theme. And I'm going to show you an example of that later. But uh, quickly, eat my words. Our theme here is food. And so we have a lot of fun. So uh, while our domain name is eatmywords.com, we, uh, we have package names like uh, the whole enchilada and signature dish. We have our blog is called The Kitchen Sink. So when you're designing your website, for instance, that's a way that you can carry your name through with legs, like name your blog something clever, name your uh, our newsletters called Juicy News. So that's a way that legs can carry through your name and theme. And I'll show you how a, a company we named did that with their domain name. Emotional. You want your name and domain name to make an emotional connection with people. And that means that it resonates with them. And you'll see some examples of those today. So the flip side of smile is scratch. And scratch stands for spelling challenge. This is a big no-no. If your name looks like a typo, scratch it off the list. We've seen a lot of those. A copycat, you don't want your name to sound like another brand. You want to be original. Uh, you know, why be somebody else when you can be yourself? You don't want your name to restrict you. An example of a restrictive name would be if Jeff Bezos had named Amazon Book Barn instead of Amazon, that name would have restricted the company to just selling books. Annoying. Annoying can take many forms. Maybe the name is spelled backwards. Maybe it uses, uh, maybe it's a, an amalgamation of a bunch of things crushed together. There's, you know, annoying subjective, but uh, you want to, you don't want to frustrate your customers. You want your name to be a welcome not, mat, not a do not disturb sign. Tame. Uh, you don't want your name to be quiet. You want it to make an impression and stand out in a sea of sameness. Curse of knowledge, that's where your name usually means something in a foreign language or it's just foreign to people. And finally, hard to pronounce. No one wants a difficult to pronounce name or domain name. So that's Smile and Scratch. Okay, Smackdown number four. Domain names can be creative and fun. If you have been pulling your hair out trying to find an available domain name, I know this is counterintuitive to think about, but I'm going to show you a lot of examples today. And the really good news is great domain names are still available. We find them all the time for our clients, and I know you can find them as well. And finally, SmackDown number six, this is really important. Just because you have the domain doesn't mean you have the trademark. Here's an example. I was naming a... Uh, a brow, an eyebrow bar, right? And I named it, uh, what did I name it? Um, brow, 
like brow palace or I, you know, I'm totally sorry. I forgot what I named it, but whatever I named it, I, the, the domain name was available. I found it. And then I looked up the trademark and L'Oreal owned the trademark. They didn't have the domain name, but that didn't matter. They owned the trademark. So before you plunk down, look, it's okay. If you want to buy a couple domain names, that's fine. But before you go and invest a lot of money in an aftermarket domain name or designing all your materials, you want to make sure that you can get the trademark. So do your trademark research and work with the trademark attorney. Okay. Now for the big secret. So you might know the secret, but I bet you don't know. I bet you don't know the full story. So the big secret it's used by billionaires and influencers, people you've actually heard of. It will change the way you think about domain names. And this is where the light bulb goes off for a lot of people. And it's so great to like see, I just see actually the sense of relief overcome people. And I can't wait for that to happen to you. And it will likely surprise you. So I want you to uh, go back in the Wayback Machine to uh, 2016. 2015, 13 years, any time in a 13 year period before that. Let's say you wanted to buy a Tesla and you went to tesla.com because you wanted to learn more about them, take a test drive, buy one off the internet, who knows, you went to tesla.com. Here's what would have happened for 13 years. You would have seen this. What? This domain has been registered? Yikes, what would you do? Would you give up? No. Would you decide you didn't want to buy a Tesla because you couldn't find them? No. You would go to your browser or Google and type in Tesla with another word. Tesla cars, test drive a Tesla, anything. We do this all the time, right? And you would get to their website. Boom, you're there. This is from 2016. And would you have even noticed what the domain name is? No. Would you care? Probably not. Would you not trust this company because they didn't own the domain name, tesla.com? No. Would you just refuse to buy a Tesla because they didn't have the exact match domain name? Of course not. That's ridiculous. So I want you to be aware of this when you're trying to, when you accidentally go to the wrong website, you just, your immediate instinct is just type another word in the browser with it. Boom, you find it, you're there. You haven't really even given it a second thought. You don't notice the domain, you don't care. So if, if Elon Musk didn't need Tesla.com for all those years, you don't need to have an exact match domain name for your company. So Tesla is just one of the companies that you know of that has bypassed a roadblock. They were at teslamotors.com and they could have been a, you know, test drive a Tesla. They could have done, you know, drive Tesla. They could have done many different domain name modifiers to have as their domain name. Another one that you know of, Dropbox, was getdropbox.com for years. They had millions of users while they were at Get Dropbox. It didn't stop them. Another one, Basecamp, right? We all know Basecamp. Most, most of us use it or have used it. Uh, they were at BasecampHQ.com. Didn't stop them. They eventually bought the domain, the exact match domain name, but it didn't stop them from starting their business. So like I'm saying, when, when you go back, and I bet you can't remember all of the domain names that you've been trying to get, but you've discounted because the exact match wasn't available, hopefully you've written down what those words are. Go back, see, look at those names again with a fresh eye, and what modifier words could you add? And we're going to look at some of those in a minute, some, some more. Um, Square is at squareup.com. You know, again, you know, that's a, a very successful company. Both of these are. So, you know, Square is a Jack Dorsey company. All right. Now, here's another way. Use .net. .net is a really trusted top-level domain, just like .com. And Box is a company. It's a B2B company. And 70% of Fortune 500 companies use Box. No one cares that their domain name is Box.net. You know, just like 
.com, .net, it's recognized, it's timeless, and it's trusted. And SlideShare is also a .net, and there's a lot of .nets. So again, keep this in mind and realize there's many ways for you to get a great name and don't worry about the domain name. So here's some more strategies. These are my surefire strategies. So I'm gonna show you some domain name modifier suggestions, how to use creative phrases. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I'm gonna share some really smart and clever workarounds. So NAC is a company that uses, it's a tutoring company. So you can either go there to hire a tutor or if you're a tutor, you can go there and join NAC to become a tutor. And so they've used a call the action, join NAC. And I think call to actions are great because like, so let's say Tesla was drive Tesla. That's a call to action, it's a verb. So I highly recommend that. Here's a, uh, here's a way to say a lot with a little. Goodbit is a company that helps people understand cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So it's an education website. And their domain name is, and I named Goodbit, by the way, their domain name, which they came up with, is Good, no, actually I came up with it, Goodbit 101. Because 101 is all about education and learning, right? So 101 in a really short little, you know, three characters says a lot. And we talk about a picture saying a thousand words. It's really great when your name or a word can say a thousand words as well. That's what you want to go for. Um, here is where we're creating a memorable phrase. Watermark is a Bay Area executive. It's a, it's a organization for executive women that my company named. And if you stay for, uh, if you go to webinar five, which is in a couple days, that is on name changes. You will see what Watermark's name was before it was Watermark. And trust me, this is a great name change. So Watermark, they couldn't get Watermark, their organization, they couldn't get to .org. So they came up with a memorable phrase that works really well. And it's, we are Watermark. And what I love about we are Watermark, it's inclusive, right? It makes members, and it's a very exclusive organization, it makes members feel good about themselves. It's help branding, them. It's, help, it's helping brand them. And it's, it's a sense of pride too. We are Watermark. It just feels good. So that's an opportunity you have. So let's say they were watermark.org or watermark.com. It's, you know, it's good, but we are Watermark. It's an opportunity for them to say so much more. And that's what you have. So I want you to look at your domain name as an opportunity. If you can't get that exact match domain name, what opportunity can you give yourself to extend your brand? And this is an easy way to do it. So think about that. Um, here's another one, a memorable phrase. This coffee company, I saw it when you're at the fancy food show, Joe, it's Joe Coffee. And uh, I don't know if the founder's name is Joe or if it's just called Joe because coffee is known as Joe but I never forgot their domain name and it's Joe Knows Coffee and it's really fun. So it has Joe and coffee in the name, but by saying Joe Knows Coffee, they're making a statement, right? Like these guys know coffee. So I think that's a really strong message that they're sending and it makes people smile. And going back to the smile and scratch test, you want your name to make an emotional connection. That's the E in smile. Joe knows coffee, it makes people smile and feel good. So that's what I'm talking about with emotional. Here's an, another name that I saw at the fancy food show. I am a peanut butter connoisseur. And the fancy food show, by the way, it's uh, two sides of this huge convention center in San Francisco, Moscone Center. And it's aisle after aisle of fancy food purveyors. So imagine going to Whole Foods that was at a convention and every booth has fine gourmet foods and peanut butter. So this company, Peanut Butter & Co, it's not the most creative name, but when I turn the corner 
And I saw this huge banner above their booth with their domain name. I never forgot it. I love peanutbutter.com. Now, for someone like me that loves peanut butter, that made a tremendous emotional connection. And I'll tell you the power that that had. There was probably 15 peanut butter purveyors at the fancy food show. And I was just walking around in a peanut butter coma. And I couldn't remember one from the next, but I never forgot that domain name ever. All these years later, I still remember it. I, I wrote about it in my book as well. Now, Peanut Butter and Co. owns the domain name peanutbutterandco.com, but if you type it in, it redirects to ilovepeanutbutter.com. Why? It's more fun for them to give that out as their domain name. Their email addresses are, you know, jack at ilovepeanutbutter.com. Why? Again, it's more fun and it's more memorable, right? Who wouldn't remember that? My name is Jack at I love, email, Jack at I love peanut butter. No one's ever gonna ask how to spell it. They're gonna smile, they're gonna laugh. It's gonna start a conversation. That's what you can do with a memorable phrase. Now, I talked about legs a little bit, and here is a name that, a domain name that has legs. So Pop Psychology is the name of a popcorn store that I named a long time ago. And I know, because I'm a bad speller, psychology is hard for a lot of people to spell. And I couldn't get pop psychology as a domain name anyway. So what I did is I created a phrase that ties into pop psychology that actually ended up being their tagline as well. And it's crazy for popcorn, right? Because psychology, of course, being a little bit about, uh, you know, just playing off of psychology crazy. This was a fun one. Their, uh, their popcorn came wrapped in shrink wrap. They had uh, flavor names like multiple personality disorder, had six different flavors. The sweet and salty tin had, uh, was called bipolar. So that's what I mean by a name with legs. So that's a really easy way. So if you're really frustrated and you can't find a domain name that works with your name, or that is an exact match domain, or that you don't, there's not the perfect modifier you can find, create a memorable phrase. People will love it, remember it, and it will help brand your startup. Okay, now we're gonna talk about smart workarounds. So this is where you have something really difficult and you need to work around it, or you just have, it's a challenge. So here's a guy, his name is Patrick, Schwerdfurger, I can never pronounce his last name and he's forgiven me for that. Patrick is a big time speaker. He speaks globally and he wanted, he wants to use his name as his domain name. Okay. A lot of speakers want to use their personal name as their domain name, but he knows that nobody could ever spell it or pronounce it. So when he gives it to meeting planners, it was, it was troublesome, right? You, you can, and I saw when a lot of you were joining this session, I could see your name when you, were, when you were being admitted to the waiting room. And a lot of you have names that are difficult for people to spell and pronounce. And think about that also when you're coming up with names for your brand and your domain name, you don't wanna make it difficult for people. So Patrick was so smart. For meeting planners, he created this domain name, bookpatrick.com. So he just tells a meeting planner, just go to my website, bookpatrick.com. And when they get there, it just redirects to his name, Patrick Schwerdgefurger, apologies, .com. So that's something you can do. You can do a redirect. But I don't even think he should have done a redirect. I think he should just have branded himself, not book Patrick. He could come up with a different name. But this was a really simple solution that meeting planners love. Okay, so next, this company is called Man's Packing. And they make, you've seen these in the grocery store probably, uh, a lot of vegetables, uh, prepackaged vegetables. Their target audience is moms with kids. And... Man's packaging is not a sexy name for a company or a domain name. And it really doesn't have anything to do with vegetables. It's more of like an old, the company is over a hundred years old. So their domain name is Veggies Made Easy. Really smart workaround. It's a clever phrase too. 
but that's how they got around a challenge. So this is what you can do. So really think outside the box. And I'm about to show you a way to brainstorm a lot of these, a lot of these ideas that will really help you. And finally, this is my favorite smart workaround. This company is called Greenberg Smoke Turkeys. And Greenberg Smoke Turkey, not really a particularly good, interesting, creative name. Greenberg is a name that can be spelled two different ways with a E or a U. Uh, it's, you know, obviously named after a family. So, and you know, how timely that uh, we're coming up on Thanksgiving. And I know you probably won't be sitting around a big Thanksgiving table this year, but I have a feeling you might tell people this domain name because it's so good. Gobblegobble.com. Awesome, right? I want to tell you, I was, I first saw this, I was reading the O Magazine, Oprah's Magazine, her annual holiday gift guide, and I was at the dentist, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, I love it, it's so, you know, it's great, and then I went into the dentist, and I was on, like, nitrous oxide and different, you know, medications, and I got home, and I was, like, on pharmaceuticals, and I still remembered, I didn't remember anything else on her holiday list. All I could remember later was gobblegobble.com. So, hey, if it passed that test, that's a winner. Imagine having a name like for your domain like Gobble Gobble or I Love Peanut Butter and having that redirect to your company. So think about that. If you already have a troublesome name or a name that's challenging for people in any way, Try doing something like this. And trust me, I know because I have a clever name for my company, people will just break out into a grin. Everybody loves humor. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to brainstorm domain names. And this is so cool. So Name Studio is my favorite domain name suggestion tool. It's, it's really the only one I ever use or recommend. It is developed by VeriSign, who is the sponsor of these webinars. But I want to let you know that regardless of if they were sponsoring this, I would be telling you about Name Studio because I love it so much and it's really helped me and my business. And I want everybody to know about it. So like I said, it's my favorite. Um, it's really easy to use and fun to play with. And I actually end up buying a lot of domain names just for fun because I do come up with so many using it. Um, and it's, what's so great about it, it has built-in domain name brainstorming capabilities. And it's also great for brainstorming brand names too. Now, tomorrow, uh, when we do the brainstorming webinar, you're going to see how I use it for that which is just amazing because it's hard to find, first of all, good domain name tools. I don't think there's really any out there. Most of them like spit out gobbledygook, but with Name Studio, you're getting real words, like whole word names. That's why I have such a love affair with Name Studio. And what you're going to see is how easy and fun it is to use. So here we go. It's at namestudio.com. And what happens is, users type in keywords for domain names related to your idea or business. So in this case, I pretended that I had my dream job of a kitten, like, like a kind of like a dog trainer, but a kitten, a kitten trainer. But I thought I would be a little more cute than that. So my name that I came up with was Kitten Tamer. And right away, domain name told me, you know, wah, wah, <laughs> your domain name is not available. Okay, we all have gone through that before. But I see right below that there's a lot of other available suggestions. Kitten hyphen tamer, okay. Kitty tamer, that could be good. Mouse tamer, okay, that just makes me laugh. And it's, a, a, of course, I'm not naming mice, but it's kind of funny. And I might buy it just because I love it. But here's where you can really use Name Studio to your advantage is you can go to the brainstorming function right here and you will get even more domain name suggestions and get really creative. So let's take a look at what happens when you click on brainstorming with Kitten Tamer. Okay, 
Right away, I see my words at the top and they're each in a different column. So under kitten, I'm seeing a lot of dynamically generated relevant domain name options that complement the keywords, right? So these are words related to kitten. Here's words related to tamer. Also, I see prefixes I could add as a modifier and suffixes. So this is the ultimate mix and match, right? I can spend hours on Name Studio just playing and mixing and matching. Everything in green is available and words in gray are not. So this is showing me things that are available with Kitten and things that are available with Tamer. So I see the Kitten Tamer. That's awesome. I'm just gonna get that. But wait, I see more. Kitten Tamer Club. Oh my gosh, I love it. Suddenly, this is what I love about Name Studio. It changes your, your idea for a business because we all pivot, right? So here I am coming up with, I'm going to be the Kitten Tamer, but now I see Kitten Tamer Club and suddenly I'm like, oh my gosh, subscription model, right? Like we're all trying to go that way. So like I can have a club and make it a subscription. I never in a million years would have come up with club on my own. And that's what I like about Name Studio. It goes far deeper than just regular domain name modifiers that you might think of on your own or just the common ones. You're going to get things that are uncommon and really dig deep. Okay. So, so it really spurs your creativity. So now I look at, and I see Kitty Slayer. Oh my gosh, I love it. It kind, kind of reminds me of a band name. So that, that's super fun. Like, where are you ever going to see the word Slayer, right? Like, this is what I love. I have to tell you, after being a namer for 15 years, I have seen every name. I get so excited if I see a new word. I've never seen the word Slayer on a list anywhere, and I never would have come up with it. And that's what I mean about brainstorming and like really spurring your creativity. How would you come up with this on your own? And it, hey, if I'm not going to come up with it, most people wouldn't, but Name Studio will uh, because it's that smart. Um, and for, unfortunately, it's kind of replacing me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> And next, I see Kitten Wrangler, and I was like, oh my gosh, I absolutely love Kitten Wrangler. So that's what I decide my name is going to be, and I see that it's available. Kitten is available with any word in green. So here I go. Congratulations, your domain name is available, kittenwrangler.com. So I'm going to get it. Now, like I said, you can spend hours on this. So any of you that have been struggling with domain names, Start here, just for the brainstorming purposes around it, right? Start here, really play around with it. You are going to have so much fun and just keep putting in different words and you can keep diving deeper. So you, it's like a built-in thesaurus, but it, it's even more, it's related words and it's hard to find those. So just keep playing around with it and I promise you, you will find a lot of great ideas and you might even change your business model based on, like, I might become a mouse wrangler, for instance. So I highly encourage you to play around with it. It's so much fun. All right. So key takeaways from today. It's really easy to bypass roadblocks. I've just given you a lot of ideas. So don't be frustrated. Don't feel stuck. Look at, look at what Elon Musk did. All these big companies, you're using their products. If they can by bypass a roadblock, so can you. You do not need an exact match domain name. Nobody cares but you. You really don't. And honestly, watch yourself over the next week. And when you accidentally type in, a, you know, looking for, you know, you typed in delta.com and trying to get to Delta faucets, but instead you got to Delta Airlines, you wouldn't give up. You type in Delta faucets, boom, you're there. So think about all those times that that's happened to you and your own users, what will happen. Um, use helpful modifier words you've seen a lot today. Try creative phrases and work around. And lastly, explore Name Studio for fresh ideas. And like I said, you might want to start there. Now, before I take questions, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the upcoming webinars. Uh, tomorrow, we'll do webinar four on brainstorming. I'm going to give, I, like I said, I'm going to show you how to brainstorm even more using Name Studio. And I'm going to give you some great tips, tools, and techniques 
I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process. You're going to learn about the creative brief, which is your brand name roadmap. So you're not just brainstorming, throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. You're actually going to see how to have a strategy that you can follow and make sure that you are sticking to it, not just grasping at oh, that domain name is available. I want you to have a name that's really gonna work with your vision. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to prepare to brainstorm. There's actually things that you need to do that will make you more successful. I'm gonna show you lots of new ways to get fresh ideas that you haven't thought of before, I promise. And these are easy things to do. And all of them you can do online. And I'm gonna show you how to choose the right name, not the name that's met with the least resistance. And there's probably some things that you are doing wrong that I'm going to show you how to correct and do, do right. Okay, then on Thursday, we have webinar five on name changes. So you're going to see what are the primary reasons for name changes. I'm going to show you so many awesome before and after name examples, including the pretty bad name that Watermark was called before we renamed them Watermark you are going to learn all about pros of changing your name and the cons and the good news is there's there are some cons but they're all things that you can overcome and move past i'm going to show you how to execute a name change including how to roll it out right who you know how do you get all of your ducks in a row you will learn how to do that so this is one that even if you're not thinking about changing your name i encourage you to attend this webinar because Chances are being in the startup world, you know somebody that either needs a name change or will be thinking about it at some point. And it would be great if you could learn that and share that with them. And if you missed the first webinar last week, this is the foundation for the whole series, The Power of Awesome Names. And you are gonna learn what you can achieve when you have a really awesome name. And this is, you know, everything from how to attract customers to getting your name tweeted and repeated. That's what happens when you have a great name. And this is where I will go through Smile in depth. So you will learn more about the five qualities that make a name awesome. So we'll take a deep dive on that. And then finally, the second webinar from last week that you'll eventually be able to get in the full package is Scratch that we talked a little bit about. And I will take you on a deep dive through the seven deadly deal breakers. And you'll see a lot of examples of what not to do. And we'll talk about how that can be harmful to your brand and what you can do to avoid those things. Whew. Okay. So now it's time to ask me anything. So I'm ready. Fire away. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Alexandra, for that. Just to let everyone know as well, all the recordings from all the webinars will be available on our YouTube channel once the series is complete. So just make sure you have an eye out for that. So Alexandra, we do have a lot of questions, so I'll just get started. What are some annoying name brands you have seen? Oh, well, the one that, uh, they're no longer in business, but it's X-O-B-N-I. And I'll let you figure out how to pronounce that and what that means. Um, <laughs> and, great. Any ideas? No, I. Okay, I, it's um, it's uh, inbox spelled backwards. Oh, that's so weird. I know. So if you think about it, now this is an example of when someone was being clever, but just because something's clever doesn't mean it's a good idea. It might be clever to where two different, like a striped sock and an argyle sock <laughs> on a job interview. But uh, yes, it's very clever is a good idea. No. So just because something's clever doesn't mean it's a good idea. And most people cannot, they're not seeing that that's spelled backwards. And even if I said to all of you, spell your first and last name backwards right now, it's hard, it's hard to do. Unless you have dyslexia, like one of my neighbor friends do, people don't, people just don't intuitively do that. <laughs> okay, and how important is a dot com versus like a dot biz, dot us, or even a dot co? I think that definitely, I mean, I know that dot com is king, right? And followed up on that is dot net. 
Um, the one thing that I think can be really problematic is when you get into what's called a CCTLD, a country code top level domain. So there's one that, that I saw, I have a new online course and I actually talk about this one in my course and the name, I don't actually know how to pronounce the name of the company. And this is where, uh, this is where like a dot, a, a country code can be problematic. So I just saw their logo and it's card mm -hmm. dot IO. And I don't know if the company name is pronounced card card.io or cardio i i have no idea and you don't want people to pronounce your name more than one way you only want people to pronounce your name one way because if i was like grace if i was telling you about this new startup cardio and somebody else was telling you about a new startup startup card you would have no idea if it was the same and because people often see your names like i did with card cardio card.io i don't know how to pronounce it and sometimes the only way i know how to pronounce a company name is after hours i'll call their voicemail and hear hear what it says <laughs> that's the only way i can find out so yeah there's one vega and i was it's like vegetarian protein and i was like is it vega vega or vega like vegetarian like vega <laughs> vega and it was vega but like i wouldn't know that i would think it would be vega like vegan or vega like vegetarian so that's <laughs> what you really need to be careful of with with names in, in general is the pronunciation but yeah dot net and dot com there's plenty of domain names available so how many domain names do you own oh my gosh well I, love <laughs> I have to tell you it's really embarrassing every month i get a notice from godaddy telling me like these domains are about to expire. And it's like, oh my gosh, because I buy them for my clients thinking I'll just reserve them when I see them. And then ultimately, <laughs> you know, they only pick one name. So yeah, I let them go. So no more than 20 at a time, but I, a lot of namers have started side businesses selling domain names on the aftermarket because they buy so many. What do you think about that, about people buying and then selling domain names? As um, like I'm not a fan. I'll tell you what I'm really not a mm -hmm. fan of personally is people uh, squatting on .org names because I feel that those should be reserved for organizations and nonprofits and that like there's a cupcake store called, at eatmywords.org and they're not giving away free cupcakes. <laughs> I can <laughs> So yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of people parking domain names, but Hey, they, they just do. Um, and I got to tell you, I'm always really shocked at like, we have a client who's, who's well off and we suggested a name to him that he loved it got trademark screen and the name's really long and the company wanted $10,000 as a starting bid on the domain name. We're like, no, we'll just add a word. We added the word law, a nice short word to get the name that he wanted. <laughs> but yeah, I try to avoid, I try to avoid aftermarket names just because there's always a workaround. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So someone was wondering, how do you set up your agreements with clients? Daily hourly rates or also value-based deals based on naming ideas, sign off by C level, et cetera. Um, how do you like work with startups and how basically does that kind of go on? Yeah, we work with, um, we, we, we don't do hourly because I'm kind of like an idiot savant sometimes with names and I just like spit them out. It happens all the time. So <laughs> there's two ways of working with us. Either you hire us for a full-time engagement or a full engagement it, or, um, a lot of people, I was doing consulting, but I had to stop because we got so busy with the full-time stuff, the bigger projects, but I do have this new online course. It's like this, but you know, on steroids, um, a lot of what's in this webinar and more. And with the course comes a free hour of consulting with me. And that's where you get me on the phone and I can like help you coach you through whatever issues you're having, give you ideas. A lot of times names come out of those. And then there's also monthly group calls. So I do have that as well. And all of that's at, at eatmywords.com. Just click on new masterclass. Oh, wow. That's amazing. As soon as I get a business, you're the first person I'm calling. Yeah. Where do you get yeah. your inspiration from? Does it just come with you like in the shower? Do you go on like inspirational walks? Like what do you do to kind of 
you know, get the juices flowing? That's such a great question. So you can see my office behind me, both in the photo, and then <laughs> I had to take down those pictures from the wall because they, I have all these big lights for the webinar and they made, they were, they have a glare, so I had to take those down, but my whole office is full of eye candy and that's what inspires me. And then um, I work out of my pool house, so I'm looking out over a swimming pool with a big pink flamingo and a surfboard fence with 26 surfboards and a tiki bar. And I have all kinds of toys in here. I have a skateboard, a surfboard, a sofa made out of stuffed animals. So my, my desk is shaped like a pur purple Easter egg. And so like behind me is a giant um, clamshell full of succulents that I made. So I make a lot of succulents. That's like my art, my art projects. So for me, it's just being around color and interesting objects. That's where I get my inspiration. I will definitely need like an MTV Cribs, um, <laughs> what's it called, tour of your house and working space one day. Oh, for sure. The next question is, how do you work with companies when naming is such a subjective deal? Some will love it, some will hate it, some will be indifferent. Any thoughts of how to arrive at a consensus? That's a great question. So in fact, in my book, I have a whole chapter about how to build consensus, but what we do is we show people a hundred names. So it's easier to give people a lot of names and have them choose. Mm -hmm. So we might show a hundred names and then ask everybody, you know, pick 15 names that you like, and then we go from there. But one thing, um, and if you can't make it tomorrow, I'll tell you a couple things. Don't send out a survey monkey that because look nobody knows your brand more than you do if you have attended some of these webinars or read my book or done my course you are much more of an expert on naming than they are so you know make sure they pass the smile and scratch us that's a way to kind of get to help with consensus at least showing people hey these pass this objective test and then just really having people champion the names that they believe in and saying why they're good names and not a personal opinion, but more of an objective opinion. And the question to ask yourself is not, do I like it? The question to ask yourself is, is it right for the brand? Perfect. And then also next question is, do you have a favorite source to buy domain names? GoDaddy, Network Solutions? Oh, there's, I mean, well, I'll tell you my favorite name, even though it fails the smile and scratch test. Um, okay, Network Solutions. Um, okay, their name is very tame. Um, and GoDaddy is a very exciting, fun name. <laughs> yes, it violates some rules, but I honestly have never been able to think of what I would name a domain registrar. But I, I personally like GoDaddy, but I know that there's many different registrars out there. <laughs> and what about the words that are frequently misspelled like awkward? How do you avoid these? Um, do things like I did. Well, okay, a couple of things is you can, it's like the word mortgage is one of the, there's, there's, if you Google like top 100 most misspelled words, you'll see them <laughs> and mortgage is one of those. So sometimes people will buy the incorrect spelling and have it forward to the correct spelling. So that's one way, one thing that you can do. Another thing you can do is like I did with pop psychology, just have your domain name, not have the word, the difficult word in it. And like I did with, with crazy for popcorn, that's easy to spell. Oh, okay. Makes sense. And then is there a common expectation around domain name endings like .com, .co, .net? I know you kind of brushed over it before, but is there a common expectation around those domain names? People want .com. That's the that <laughs> thing. And look, if you if you had asked me a long time ago, like to make predictions, I would have predicted complete. I thought like dot biz would take off. It hasn't, because I like that. It, I like. I know it's spelled a different way, but I thought it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> uh, but no, dot com and dot net. Those those are the ones. And look, I gotta tell you, they're the most trusted. And I know, like, if you have a name like, a, like about dot me, they use. Oh, by the way, dot .io, I'll just tell you, is I'm sure nobody knows what it's the country code for. It's Indian Ocean Territories, and dot .me is Montenegro. Like, you don't know what's going to happen with these countries. <laughs> like, dot .ly is Libya. I have been to Libya, and even I didn't know that. So, and trust me, if you had to go to Libya, you probably, to get that as your, as your uh, domain name extension, you probably wouldn't want that as yours. It's a difficult country to travel in. 
But I think that when you have a name that's like one of these, like a .me, and people, I know, because because we get, look, a, a lot of people that hire us are hiring us because they've had a troublesome domain name. And I've heard stories like this. So someone will have like a .me, and so they'll give out their website address, you know, let's say it's about.me, you know, and then someone will say about.me.com and like, no, about.me. Well, what do you mean .me? Because not everybody, look, you guys are all super tech savvy. You're all startup people. You're all Im immersed in this. But outside your bubble, people don't know. They're unfamiliar. They, they want something familiar. And the most familiar extensions are .com and .net. Okay. And then is, how do you feel about phonetic spelling? Is that okay? Um, no, uh, no, I think that it, it depends. Okay. I saw one one time. So there's a country, there's a state in Mexico called Oaxaca and it's impossible to spell. I think it's O-X-A-C-A. -A. Like it doesn't look like Oaxaca, especially to Americans that to people in the United States, I mean, that um, we're pretty clueless about things like that. So I, the restaurant spelled it phonetically, W, 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 I think W A H A K A, Oaxaca. And so it was phonetic and I love that, right? Or like mm -hmm. it's Jorge, Jorge it's George in Spanish, but it, but it's spelled George, but nobody, well, I guess people in San Diego where I live would know it's Jorge. But I thought Jorge's would be a really fun name for a Mexican restaurant in the States where it was spelled phonetically H-O-O-R-A-Y-S, Jorge's. Like, that's fun. That's when it's okay to help people pronounce it. But I think mm -hmm. if you're spelling something phonetically, it's just going to, it's going to be something you're always going to have to spell it for people. And that, like, anytime you have to spell your name for somebody, you're essentially, you're essentially apologizing for it and making it because you always say well it's spelled that way because we couldn't get an exact match domain name well now you don't need one you have seen all these workarounds um so yeah you never want to apologize for your name because that will devalue your brand okay and then we just have two more questions left is there um so i thought that having only one or two works in a domain was critical but it sounds like you're saying longer is okay if it's memorable basically yeah. how much should we stress on keeping it short i don't think short is important i i really don't i i, I just i mean like i'll give you an example there was a a company in san francisco where i used to live that was a furniture consignment store and it was named previously owned by a gay man it's hilarious right you never will forget it i read it in the paper i never forgot it and like <laughs> that lo name is a mile long but it's really funny and like it says previously owned by a gay man and it's like oh this furniture is going to be really modern and cool and in great condition right so that name speaks volumes but if it was just called some like some made up word that's you know five letters long what does that say it says nothing and that's why having a long name is okay. And look, once somebody's typed it into their browser once, it's going to autofill. And same with same with email addresses. And if it's a good name like that, who cares? You know, like <laughs> another we name, we buy ugly houses, right? Everyone here that sees that name on a billboard, no one forgets it. It's funny. It makes you laugh. That's what I mean by an emotional connection, right? And they, like they have really have built a brand around buying ugly houses. <laughs> okay last question the people need to know how many glasses do you have how many glasses a pair of glasses do you have oh i i have four <laughs> <laughs> i would like to have more but they're really expensive <laughs> definitely you just have to wait till your insurance kicks in but that is all the questions thank you so much for those who joined us today hope you join us for the last two sessions we have tomorrow and Thursday. Thanks everyone. This is a blast. Thanks for all the questions. I hope you ask more tomorrow. <laughs> all right. Thank you everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, Bye Alexandra. Bye.